For this particular patient, the choice of treatment was ibrutinib, ibrutinib monotherapy. Um, and it, ibrutinib is currently approved in the U.S. for both previously untreated patients as well as previously treated patients. The particular choice of ibrutinib for this patient is driven predominantly by the presence of the 17-P deletion because we know that chemoimmunotherapy exposure and chemoimmunotherapy treatment for patients who have 17-P deletion is really contraindicated. It's not active. It's not effective at getting a long-term uh, getting long-term control of the disease. So for this patient, the particular choice was based on the presence of the 17P deletion. There is le somewhat limited data available for treatment of patients with CLL in the frontline setting with 17P with ibrutinib. So we have some information, but not a lot of patients have been treated with in clinical trial in this setting. 17P deletion is an unusual or infrequent characteristics in untreated patients to begin with. It's about 5% of untreated patients. Um, so in terms of the clinical trial data we have, there are fewer patients that have been reported on with 17P deletion in the frontline setting treated with ibrutinib. The expectation for this patient is an extended period of durable disease control and remission. Um, most of the patients who are receiving ibrutinib in the frontline setting and in the salvage setting have a response. Nearly all of them have responses. Most of the responders are partial responders where the disease is reduced, the disease burden is reduced by at least 50% or more. A fewer percentage of them are, uh, achieve a complete remission. Now this patient particularly achieved a complete remission, so that is a very favorable feature for the response for this patient and would likely be associated with a long uh, period of disease control with ibrutinib. For such patients, we aren't necessarily stopping treatment even if they achieve a complete remission. Uh, it would be reasonable to have an assessment of minimal residual disease in this patient to determine if there is any measurable disease for this patient. Um, I would expect that that's not the case. It would be highly, highly unusual to have a patient with a 17P deletion getting ibrutinib in the frontline setting achieving uh, a complete remission and to be MRD negative. That's, that, that, that's a rare, uh, very rare event. But um, this patient has had a very good response and the expectation should be that they have several years of disease control with the ibrutinib monotherapy. There have, we have done a trial at Anderson looking at ibrutinib with and without rituximab. So chemotherapy works much better when you give uh, a CD20 antibody with it. That doesn't seem to be so much the case with ibrutinib-based therapy. So in our trial that we did and in, in our experience, and it was a randomized trial of ibrutinib, with or without rituximab, there wasn't really a benefit in terms of long-term outcome with the addition of uh, rituximab to uh, ibrutinib uh, for patients uh, treated either for relapse disease, and there were a few patients in the frontline cohort of our trial who did have 17P deletion.